Hey guys, welcome back to another video in our mini series on React hooks. So in this video, we will learn everything about use context hook, which in my opinion is one of the most popular at the moment as it allows passing data to child elements without using the Redux. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, so I have a very basic React application setup. And in this, I have three components, the app component. And inside the app component, I have two other components, which is the C component, a class component, and an F component, which is a function component. And in the app component, I have created a counter using the use state. So if you don't know about the use state, then I have a video on it. You can click on the card above and jump to it directly. So we have two functions, the increment function and the decrement function. So on click of the button, we do the increment of the counter and on click of the other button, we do the decrement of the counter. So till now, it's a very simple counter application. So now if I click on the increment, we increment the counter. If I click on the decrement, we decrement the counter. Now what I want here is that I want to display my value of the counter in my function component and in my class component. So in order to do that, I need to pass the value of the counter as a props. So what we are going to do, I'm going to pass props here. So let's name the prop as counter and the value of the prop will be a counter. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do the same thing for the class component as well. Now let's go to the function component and inside this function and we are going to receive the props. So let's destructure the prop as counter and here I'm going to print the value of the counter. So I'm going to do an H2 and I'm going to do a counter here. So we should be able to see a counter in the function component and the same thing we can do in the class component. So I'm going to write an H2 tag here. And inside the h2 tag, we can get the value of the counter as this dot props dot counter. And we should be able to see the counter. And now if I increment the counter, we can see the value in the uh, function component and in the class component getting updated. Now just imagine that the function component is having one more child component and you want to access the counter value in the child component as well. So if we go to the function component, so I already have created a child component so let's use this f child. So I'm going to use this f child. All right. And we need to display the counter in the f child as well. So what we will do, we again need to pass it as a prop. So if I pass it as a prop here, which will be a counter. And if I do it a counter here, and then let's destructure the props here. So this will become a counter. And then we can print this value of the counter, which will be this. And if I save it, then we should be able to see the value here as well. But the problem here is the this is the prop drilling where you are passing a prop from your app component to your function component and then from your function component to your function child component. And this can be solved very easily with the help of the context where you create a context and then that context can be passed to any of the child directly. So what we are going to do, we are going to create a context. So let me create a new file for the context. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new file and the name of the new file will be counter context dot JS. All right. And to use the context, we need to import a create context. So let's import a create context and that will be coming from react. And we will just export the constant. So I'm going to export the constant of counter context. And this will be equals to the create context. And I'm going to pass the initial value as null. All right. So when we create the context, it actually returns us two things. One is the context provider and another one is the context consumer. So first let's go to the app.js and this app.js here we are going to have the context provider counter context and this counter context will be a provider. So this is how we can add the context provider. And now whatever the child elements we want to pass the values, we will be adding these as the child of the providers. So this is how we can add the child of the providers and you can pass a value here. So let me add a simple value. So I'm going to pass a value of hello 
context. All right, so we have passed the value of the hello context and now we need to consume this value into our function component and a class component. So if we want to do it in the class component, so let's go to the class component and we need to add a context provider. So I'm going to write a counter. So this will be a counter dot consumer. All right. And inside the consumer, we can access the value which we have passed. So I'm going to access the value as value and this will be a function and inside this function we can return our JSX. So I'm going to return an H2 tag and inside the H2 tag I can actually add the value. So if I add the value here then we should be able to see the hello context and if we want to do the same thing in a function component that is where we will use the use context. So the use context source make it very simple to access the value of the context. We don't need to create all context consumer and all this stuff. So let's go to the function component and inside the function component I will simply going to create a variable with a value and this value will be equals to the use context. So I will import the use context like this and inside the use context we are going to pass our context which is the counter context. All right and now if I simply copy this and I just add the value then I should be able to get the value which is the hello context and this way you can also use the context value in our child component as well directly. So I'm going to add this and if I add the value here so I will be able to add the hello context in my child component. So this is how powerful the context API is you can directly pass your data. Let's take it to the next level. So what we are going to do here is now instead of passing this value hard coded, we actually want to pass the value of the counter. So I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to add a counter value here. So I will remove this and this will become a counter value. And now let's remove this. We don't want the uh, props. We are not passing the props anymore. So we don't want the counter context uh, file now. So I will just close this down. And in the F component now we have the access of the value to the counter. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove this as well. All right and similar in the function component we already have the value and we are passing this value as the counter value. All right so now if I click on it then we should be able to see that our counter is now getting updated in each of the component. But when you create a global state what features you need? You need to access the value of your global state in any of the component and you should also be able to update your global state from any of the component. So if I want to update my counter from my function component or from my child component then I should be able to do it. So the use context hook is more neat and clear as compared to the using of the context consumer in the class component. So now let's remove this class component. We, we don't want this now. All right. And the next thing we need that we need to update our counter from our function component and our function child component. So what we will do I'm going to pass an object here. All right and this object will contain the counter and I'm going to add the set counter. All right so now I have passed the counter and the set counter and we can go to our function component and inside the function component I'm going to change this as counter and this will become a set counter. All right, I will copy this and I'm going to change this here as well. So this has also become a counter and this will become a set counter and let's remove the props. We don't have any props now. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove this as well. All right and this counter we are printing it here in the H2. So I'm going to add this. Let's remove this as well and this counter we are printing it here. So I'm going to add this here as well. All right. So now if I click on it, the counter is still working, but we need to update the counter. So what we'll do, I'm going to create a button in the component. So I'm just going to copy this. All right. And I'm going to add my button here and we will change this increment so we can, we should be able to update our counter. So this will be an arrow function and I'm going to write a set counter. And inside this, I can do a counter plus one. All right, I'm going to copy the same thing and I will add it in my child counter because I want that from my child counter also I should be able to update my state. So I'm going to add this here and this time I will do a decrement here. All right, so this will become minus one and this I will change to decrement. All right, 
so now you can see that we we can now access our counter in any of the child using the use context hook if i click on the decrement then it will update the global state and it will get reflected immediately in all of the components that is using the global state so this is how we can make use of the use context hook to access the value and to update the values. So this helps us to solve the problem of the prop drillings where we don't need to pass the props to a multiple nested level and we can also update the state from any of the components and access the values in any of the components. So that's all I have in this video about the use context. So it's easy to use and it's very powerful to use the use context. If you have an application which has a multiple level of nested components. So I hope you like the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can and also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. And thank you. Thanks for watching.